Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So you've gotten your character to 50,000 item level at about a cost of 8 million astral diamonds. That cost being completely reducible by running said events like Feast of Lanterns just recently, getting companions and other such events along with just farming Juma bags and also just getting lucky within a dungeon chest or so. You might even drop a legendary mount, bunch of upgrade tokens and they'll all save you certain rates of astral diamonds. But the base cost is about 8 million to get to a build that I am at right now and this unlocks you all the content in the entire game. However at this point you do not actually want to be running any of the dungeons or trials unless you want to run the lower end ones. Those you can usually succeed just with the bare minimum. However what we want to focus on now is optimizing your character so that you get a good spread of your statistics so that you can fulfill your role. Now as per the title of this video this is for damage dealers so you want to be trying to maximize the output in terms of damage. So how do we do that? Well, we focus on these five offensive statistics, these first five, the priority being power, combat advantage, crit strike, crit severity, and finally, accuracy. Now, you do also want to focus on your damage. However, your damage is directly scaled off your total item level, which when you run many of the certain different content in this game, you will be scaled. So you will just have that damage moderated off your item level and be set at a given mount. So you cannot go over that amount, meaning at a certain point, there's not real any need to go higher item level unless you want to run the latest dungeon or the latest trial where they are unscaled. And that's when you want to push for the maximum. But for now, many players just stepping new into the game will not have the skill set to even go into those end dungeons, even if they have a fully optimized character, because you just won't know how to actually play. How does the game play? Enemies hitting you, how to position yourself and how to make the most of your certain power hours so that you can as a damage dealer deal the most damage. Now if you haven't seen the previous parts of my video where we got as far as we are right now I would highly recommend go and do so so that you can make sure you have the same setup that I do that gives us this 50,000 item level. Now the first step here would be to go and optimize your gear to give you more of these offensive statistics and you would go to the seals trader and go to wild and you'd purchase this headpiece. This headpiece will give you 7.5% accuracy. We can slot it in here whenever our stamina is full. And now we have 59.6% accuracy, looking pretty neat with that boost. And while you're here, I would also recommend you pick up the Mercenaries Bless Breastplate for the extra power. Then I would go to your campaigns and unlock Dragon Bone Veil. You will teleport just down here. And in this area, you can go and encounter these mini bosses. And these mini bosses can drop you these shirt and pants. One of them being this shirt, which gives you that 5% combat advantage. Make sure and go pick up one of those from those mini bosses. A video linked in the video description on all of those mini boss locations. Now, while you're in your Dragon Ball Veil vale area, I highly recommend completing this campaign and grabbing this Shattered Mythalar set. You will gain nice item level boost along with a decent bonus that will essentially allow you to deal an extra hit every time you deal combat advantage damage. Alternatively, if you're impatient and can't wait, let's say four weeks to grind out this campaign, you can go to the auction house and very cheaply buy either the Halister's Blast Scepter set or the Book of Vile Darkness set. And this will give you just a small damage boost. The Halister's Blast Scepter set will basically give you 5% damage whenever you stand still for a period of time, just three seconds. So that's very good within a boss fight where you generally don't move around a lot. The other set would be better for AoE when you do move around a lot and you can gain that permanent 2.5% extra damage bonus. And if you're farming in Avernus, you'll gain a total of 5% damage bonus. And a little bit later in the video, I will suggest you do a lot of farming there. Now you can always go and buy the Demogorgon's Reach set. It is a little bit better than both the sets I've just mentioned, but it comes at a price tag, but it might very well be worth saving for it since, yeah, the other set pieces, also expensive, will directly come at Mythic. No upgrading needed. And you can see the Sinuous Cord there as well with a nice high item level boost to go with them. 
So we equip one of those two sets. Now you can see our item level does take a hit. And yes, this will then not allow you to do the Reaper's Challenge, but by all means, you're not ready for that just yet. And when you are ready with certain optimizations, you can either push for 50,000 item level again by upgrading certain things, or you can just equip items that give you an item level boost, access it, and then re-equip the items that give you the more damage boost, the optimized version. Now the next step is to head to Unter Mountain, the Yawning Portal. Now first of all, you'll want to have make sure that you've completed fully the adventure Under Mountain. You'll have five different parts there. Now once those are all complete, a Baya Uday just here will give you three repeatable quests to complete these master expeditions. Again, you can look up how you can complete those. Now once you collect all the relics in the three areas and you come back to Abaya Ude, you will be rewarded. Now what you can obtain is some nice rings. You can pick up these ebonized salt rings or these ebonized restoration rings. The restoration rings you will use on ranged DPS classes and the assault rings you'll use on melee DPS classes. And they just give you 3% damage boost there to pretty much all of your powers. And you can see it does stack twice as we have double the swordsman's perks buff now instead of grinding out let's say these assault rings or these ebonized restoration rings you can simply purchase alternatives either the guiding ring of the spy for ranged damage or the striking ring of the master for your melee damage be warned though they're not exactly cheap with the striking being over 500,000 and the guiding ring being much cheaper at about 28,000. Now while doing expeditions you should also be able to pick up this ebonized breastplate. Now it's all right it gives less power than the previously mentioned seals of the wild mercenary breastplate however it gives percentage power so that will be stacked on top of our 67.2% there. And that means if this rating number is red, you're better off with the ebonized. So just hold on to that while you pick it up rather than trashing it. Next up, you'll want to go to the campaign, the descent into Avernus. And this will unlock you the zone Valenhas. And you can pick up all of those quests. And one of them will give you this forger's box. Now you can upgrade this thing all the way to mythic being the awakened forger's box which gives some nice statistics there along with a guaranteed 3% power all of the time. You'll slot it down into your belt and you'll press the corresponding key to activate it and that will give you the boost. Now while in the zone Valanas, you can head around here and you'll find this little vendor Juma. Now what you want to do is just do questing in this area. You can do insurgencies. You can also do your heroic encounters and they'll all give you this Juma surprise bags currency, the chaotic writings. You'll buy these bags and you'll open them. You have a chance to get all different sorts of mounts, companions, along with upgrade tokens, along with stuff like stones of health. You can also get new gear. For example, you can get an arms piece, which is somewhat decent, the spike defender of Vambraces, which I would recommend on the stepping stone picking up and using whenever you hit an enemy you gain damage resistance and whenever you get hit you gain that stacks back into extra damage bonus which is very good along with that you can also get these boots the rusted iron leggings from juma surprise bags now you can see they're tit for tat they will give you five percent extra damage bonus but a cost of reducing your incoming healing by 25 percent meaning you will take a lot less healing from your healers meaning you will most likely die a lot more often. And from the mini bosses within Valinas, this abomination exactly will drop you that rusted iron leggings if you're lucky. It's like a 10% chance to drop or something. And yes, he just spawns here and then walks around just in a short area. I can highlight it for you. He'll just walk around here and then get there and then come back again. However, alternative to those rusted iron leggings, in Under Mountain, if you complete the dungeon lair of the Mad Mage, you will most likely be able to pick up these boots of the successor. And they act exactly like later boots that I will suggest, the Wasteland Wanderers, which gives you 5% combat advantage when you're 25 feet or closer to your target. So next up, you want to go to the campaign, Path of the Fallen. Unlock that and you will gain access to the area, 
the Avernus Wastes. Now here you will also gain access to the connecting area, which is this place with just your car. And you can go and you can zoom around. However, what you want to do is have a look on your map and you can see you have the Blood War. Now this will go to either side depending if you kill devils or demons. Now when this bar fills up to one side, you will either have the demon party which will spawn just down here by the docks or you will have the devil party which will spawn just over here garyx so you'll have mog and garyx and you'll basically kill that party now when you go and kill them they can drop these rings now one ring i would recommend is going to be this ring here the ring of fallen power as long as your power rating is not capped this ring can be very useful it'll basically give you stacks of power for four seconds and can stack up to a maximum of 10 times giving you over 5000 power you can also get the ring this one of the brutal fiend which will give you 7500 power but it only gives it to you every 10 seconds every 30 seconds it's good for aoe but not so much in longer boss fights and if you need the item level you could always use both those rings as long as you don't get overcapped in the rating which we nearly will do now is where things get a little bit more complicated. What you're going to have to do is fully complete the Path of the Fallen campaign, all the way where you get to the what was lost. So you're going to have to finish Fragment of Hope. Upon completing that, you shall now have access to the Citadel itself. So you'll be able to directly teleport to the Bleeding Citadel. Now once here, you'll gain access to a bunch of different vendors, including the Zariel Favor vendor. But we're going to head down here. And once we're in the main hall here, where it's kind of like the throne, we head to the right down here. Now this is where you have all of the hunt masters. Now what we have here is the iconic hunt system within Neverwinter. First of all you have the tier 1 hunt master where essentially you're going to have to get reagents. So you can see there you're going to need gore covered chains for every one of them and then one of the following six. And what you do is you craft this lure and then you go and find your boss location and you go kill that said boss. Now hats off to Northside for making a really good detailed map. I'll have a link in the description to one of his videos where he goes briefly over it. And you can see this is all of the tier one hunts and then you have the tier two hunts and lastly the tier three. And we can see that same system represented here with this being the tier one hunt master where you get your trophies this being the tier 2 hunt master where you get your tier 2 lures and finally your tier 3 master with your tier 3 lure you can see the stars represent that there as well now again going to north side's map we can see you're going to need the certain reagents for example if we want to kill akuni the pain bringer we're going to have to kill scouts of stygia monsters get this trophy to actually drop the shattered ice fang we're going to have to kill these abominations to get the gore covered chain to combine it to obtain this lure which then you will use to summon this boss and where do you summon this boss well you can navigate to, on your map to the one icon and that's where you'll find the area where you can summon him and fighting him will drop you like this piece of gear and also the trophy that you can use we can see down here he drops this trophy which you can use in combination with this guy's trophy to create the fight where you can summon the red lady which is number nine and you'll fight her just down here and then she can drop the next trophy which then you will combine all three trophies from these tier two monsters to ultimately craft the tier three lure to summon this big boss which has loads of different gear drops and some of them being the best in slot in the game as it is right now and that's the entire system a bit complicated but from what I can say, a very good piece of gear would be the Gristro Horns from the White Thorn. And you can slot them in your headpiece. It'll give you those stacks of critical strike. In my opinion, the Scout's headpiece there with the accuracy can be a little bit better and more reliable. Especially in endgame when you already got your other stats. Especially if you run an augment. Next up, I would highly recommend getting the Bone Devil's Ribcage. This is one and only best armor piece for any dps character it's also really good for healers now how do you get this well unfortunately you look on the map and you're going to have to kill the night spine for it to drop 
we can see the bone devil's rib cage. So it's one heck of a grind to go through this entire process. Now to get these, let's say, scouts of Stygia to spawn, you're going to have to actually kill wolf-like creatures in the zone. If you want to get these malevolent Naranzagons to spawn, you're going to have to kill similar horsed riders. And if you want these Hezrao to spawn, you're going to have to kill lesser Hezrao for them to spawn. And you can see their spawn locations all dotted around here. Again, link to Northside's video where you can download this map. It's an awesome map. I highly recommend getting it. So with that, we've upgraded to our Bone Devil's Rib Cage, which is a massive bonus. You can also get in your feet slot the Greaves of the Light Guard for a big boost to your power. You can see our power goes red, which means we're wasting stats by having excess. So in that regard, you might be better off with, let's say, your successor boots or your rusted iron leggings. For your arms, you can also switch them out to the Arms of Last Resistance, which will give you that extra power and defense boost, and you'll be surprised how it works. If you have at least one party member further than 30 feet away from you, you gain this bonus, even if the rest of the party members are near you. And again, those arms of last resistance come from the night spine, unfortunately. Now keep in mind, all of these hunt bosses are pretty challenging to kill, and they get worse higher tier they are. The tier ones, you can probably solo them. Now, I wouldn't advise it. Ideally, have like a tank in the group and at least a good DPS if it's not yourself. And otherwise, on tier two, you definitely want to have a few people in your party. And then for the final boss, you want like five good people or even ten more the better. Just give a shout out in the zone chat that you're looking for people. Just make sure when you're organizing the hunt party that you have the loot mode on party leader decides and that you're the leader or the person who's using their lure is the leader. That way you could distribute the loot how you want. And from here, you do not want to underestimate the power of buff food. Right now, the current meta is to use for example, either your Sun Lord's Gift Elixir and you buy these from within your Vault of Piety just from invoking, or you would use the Wild Storm Elixir, which gives you that critical severity. And when you go and use those, they give you the nice boost in stats. Now you also want to get this event food, the Watermelon Sorbet. Now you can usually get Watermelon and Sorbet from the summer festival event. However, it will be widely available from the auction house as well. Now, an alternative option is squash soup to give you crit chance and crit severity. And lastly, you will use your flasks of potency. Now these flasks, you can go to your professions and when you have them on 17 to 18 level, you can actually go and craft these flasks of potency requiring all of these certain reagents. However, it can be very cheap to simply go and buy them off the auction house. Make sure to buy those rank threes for the nice spread of stats that they also give you. And with all of those buffs used there, our stats are looking very good. We do miss a bit more item level than we started out for, but these stats absolutely make up for that. Now, another big thing to gaining more of these offensive stats is companions. Now, I didn't mention exactly which companions you should choose upon upgrading for this very reason. So if you haven't decided yet, that's a good thing. From here, you can buy certain companions to give you certain boosts. What you want to do is ideally choose companions that are going to give you a reliable buff to all of your offensive stats. Right now, you can see we are using Lord of the Wilderness from our Festive Tiger, which we got upgraded to Mythic, mainly just because it gives us the biggest overall boost there, 750 item level and then 3.8% crit chance. The movement speed is also nice, but ideally you would have something like the phase spider which is just double offensive stats there or the alchemist also double offensive stats and the hawk double offensive stats again don't don't go copy what i have here look on the auction i'll see what's nice and cheap and anything that gives you double offensive stats that you need is generally the way to go the wild hunt rider is also a pretty neat option since it does tend to proc a lot more often than just 10 percent chance again alternatively you could have other companions that just give you more reliable boost like the black dragon ion stone for crit chance and there are many many more you can also look at people's builds and what they use but the general thing for a dps focus 
and make sure that all these companions give you nice amount of offensive stats and you can go and you can slowly upgrade them one thing to keep in mind though for a single target dps build when you're focusing just killing bosses a lot then make sure you pick up a Bateri companion and also a Minsk companion. However, their prices are not cheap. You can see Minsk also over 900,000. And so once you've got your offensive companions, if you really want to push it to try get like the best ones that'll fit with somebody who's made a build down the line, then you might want to spend that little bit extra. But generally, any companion with just all offensive stats is good. And then you can go from there and upgrade them to Mythic. Right now with this setup, 46,000 item level, this gear, we can enter combat and we can see what do our stats actually look like when we go and attack our dummy and get all of those stacks from our bone devils we can see our stats get boosted pretty mightily there and overall i'm pretty happy with these stats of course some more optimizing and tweaking can be done as well and from here you ideally want to be farming the first mini boss within vault of stars hardcore You'll go to the advanced dungeon, Vault of Stars, you go to private, you go to match options and you go hardcore. And if anybody dies, you completely reset the instance. You can farm the mini boss fairly easily. You do have to kill a few bunch of enemies. You still want a tank and a healer and three DPS to get through it smoothly. And from in that hardcore Vault of Stars, you can get some pretty decent gear. However, none that's really going to be a big upgrade. You could choose the arms piece, the wrist guards of the participation, you could get them to drop. And again, you could get the wasteland wanderers to drop as well. And those would be the two pieces I would recommend picking up from the mini bosses as a DPS player. Otherwise, you'd want to be jumping into Vault of Sc Stars, just the normal version, turn off your hardcore. Again, try come with a pre-made group with guildies and so on. And once you complete the dungeon, you'll get some end chests, which will give you some nice rewards. You can get some new rings, like we can get the Queen's Golden Opal Ring for an extra 3% melee damage. And then we can also have the Red Eyes Glare for the extra 5% power and accuracy. And otherwise, that is a pretty good looking build that we have set up here. Weapons, you'll probably want to upgrade to something like Masterwork weapons or Mirage weapons, or let's say even old Primal weapons if you still have them lying around. They can all be pretty good. Otherwise, you can of course buy Lionheart weapons or even Attempt Fate at the trial tower the mad mage again you'll want a pre-made group and on private so our stats are looking very good now and when in combat with everything procked off our stats are looking like so we have our power capped combat advantage is still a bit low but we could get our wild hunt rider upgraded that bit further and we could push for like about 85 percent we'd want to go and have a bit more companions upgraded like the alchemist for some more combat advantage the phase by will give us a bit more combat advantage and otherwise we probably miss a bit of our crit there and our crit severity but again all of these things you'll still want a good bit more tweaking and that i'm going to leave down to people who make particular builds depending on which class because that will also depend on your forte and upgrading our companion enhancement will also give us a nice boost in our stats and it's probably the first enchantment i would recommend upgrading from here in regards to all of those other enchantments that you may have and you might very well want an offensive in combat enchantment here instead of this one let's say we were to remove it our item level plummets but you can see our stats all go up by four percent which is pretty good and it's something you might want to consider just not running with the combat enchantment but again you will lose item level and you will have to find other areas to gain the boost because at this point you lose access to the vault of stars dungeon unless you run it on private you can see on public it's not available but nobody runs Vault of Stars on public anyway, because you won't get a reliable group. So, wow, this was a bit extensive. Our character does look a whole lot more ugly, but there's a lot of appearance th systems where you can change the gear that you look like, regardless of the gear you're wearing. With that said, we did get our stats to look pretty good. From here, it's just upgrading companions as the first priority along with the companion enhancement. With that said, hopefully this was somewhat helpful to you damage dealers out there and how to optimize your stats 
Again, it's something you really want to focus on before doing much other party content. Otherwise, you're just really letting down your team if you can't output the amount of damage that you really should be doing. With that said, hopefully I presented this well. If I did, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.